The goal of the federal government is to nationalize health care. Friend, I don't care what you hear, that's the bottom line, where they will take total control. But here's the question, why? In the 1990s, I was preaching in Florida. I went to a man's house. This man knew of something that was being invented. And he said to me, he says, the space shuttle's up there right now. This guy had a satellite, he had all kinds of equipment, and he actually talked to the space shuttle, and I sat in a chair, and he's talking to the guys through a computer. He, could, he, he, he worked with satellites. This guy was a genius, but he was a, a real country fella. It really surprised me. It's like he just, you know, looked like he couldn't come in out of the rain backwards. He's a genius, you know. I could probably say that about me too, so anyway, it doesn't matter. But here's what happens. He says, you know, this is in 1995, I believe, 96. He said, you know about the chip? And I said, no. So he explains to me that there's a chip the size of a grain of rice with a lithium battery that will hold information that will be placed here, there, on the right hand, or right above the hairline. The, the body heat charges up the lithium battery. And I'm thinking, what are they going to do with that? He says, well, you'll see one day. He said, one day the federal government of the United States and probably the entire world will have a tracking system in this chip, and they will know everywhere you are. He said, now think about that. If your child, something happens to your child, why well, immediately you'll know where they are. Think about the information. Think, and he thought it was great. I said, you ever read Revelation 13 that you can't buy or sell lest you have a mark in your right hand or a number? A number in your right hand? Or a number in your forehead? He said, no, I never heard about that. And I shared it with him. He thought, well, he thought that's interesting. But he thought it was the greatest thing in all the world. I never heard much about that chip till last year. And a man contacted me and he says, Perry, I've got to tell you this. Now, I know this guy. This wasn't some stranger. He said, I was coming out of a state. And I've, I've learned not to name everything like I used to. But he said, I was coming out of a state on a plane. Beside me was a full bird colonel. And beside me was a doctor. He said, I was so tired from preaching all week. I didn't want to talk to nobody. And I put in this business class. I sat my chair back. And he said, uh, all of a sudden, the uh, guy over here on this side gets to talking. And he looks over across from me and says, uh, what do you do? He says, well, uh, I'm a, a speaker, minister, speaker. He said, well, that's, that's good. He said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm going down to, he named the state, he named the city, to meet with 3,000 doctors about the medical chip. He said, what medical chip? He said, well... It's a chip that will be inserted into your right hand or your forehead. Well, about that time, he said, my ears perked up. And he said, uh, we've been working on it for several years, but there's certain blood types that would reject it. And we had to perfect it before we can release it, and we think we've got it perfected now. So I'm meeting with 3,000 doctors to show them. He said, these are not just normal doctors. These are leaders of hospitals. To show them how everybody will be, go be going. You'll have to go to your hospital. It'll take you just about eight seconds to have it implanted, and it'll have all of your medical information on it. And he said the Obama administration is demanding it be finished by the end of this year. And so my guy says, are you really serious about this? He said, oh, yes, I'm serious. And the guy laughed. He said, you know what that means, don't you? There'll be nowhere to hide. Full bird colonel, who's on his way to a place, looks at the doctor, and he doesn't like what he hears. And he begins to tell the doctor, he says, well... Um, that's interesting you say that. He said, because you know what we're getting ready for? He said, no, sir. He said, riots and burning down of American cities. He said, I'm going to have a meeting about that, as a matter of fact. He said, are you serious? He said, yeah. Now, of course, when you're in the military, you can't say too much. So they got to question him, and he was vague, or he wouldn't answer. They questioned him. And so the preacher started questioning him when the doctor wasn't. And he said, you know, sir, I'm a, I'm a minister. And he says, that's very interesting what you say. He said, it almost sounds something like out of the Bible. He said, yep. He said, there's going to be food shortages. People aren't going to be able to get their food transported to them. He said, they're not going to get their government stamps. And he said, you know what I'm investing in? He said, what? He said, golden guns. Not golden guns, gold and guns. <laughs> and he says, I'm putting $5,000 a month on gold. He said, because we're about to have hell break loose. Now, he said to the preacher, martial law will be declared. And he said, when it is, people are going to panic. And he said, there's going to be a... And he got, into, he got into stuff. So he found out this man was also a Christian. And when he found out he was a preacher, he was willing to talk. But I wanted to go back to the chip. When I was preaching this in Georgia, do we have that picture now? Have we put that up yet? That's, that's an actual picture of it. When, we, when I was preaching in Georgia... A man came up who's related to someone here. They're a relative. And they said, 
this is so interesting that Perry said this because I've never put this together about Revelation 13 about a number in your hand and your head. He said, but we just had a meeting at the hospital with the people who are, who are behind this. And he said, here's the plan, is when the, when the federal government passes the new health bill and they get it like they want it, the insurance companies are going to demand that everybody be chipped. And here's how they're going to sell it. That it's going to save paperwork. You no longer will have to have paperwork. Everybody will think that's great. Number two, it's going to uh, enable you to get in faster. In other words, all you have to have is run your hand through the scanner or your head through the scanner and said when you're adding 40 million people, then after they pass, listen, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. After they pass it and everybody's going to get concerned, they're going to come up with this and there'll be a lot of people that think it's going to be great. And he said, then here's the big one. They charge you $10 a month for your health information. 12 months per person is $120 a year. Add that up with 300 million Americans happen to have a chip and you've got the government paying for part of the health care. I have heard them ask three times, how do you pay for it? Nobody will answer the question. Before you think, before you think that I'm making this up, this was handed to me right here two weeks ago. All right? Ready? I'm, I, I could read the whole thing, but for sake of time, I'm not going to. February 2010, okay? Richmond, Virginia. The House of Delegates is voting on a bill to protect Virginians from attempts by employers and insurance companies to implant microchips in their bodies against their will. Mark L. Cole, a Republican from Fredericksburg, said privacy issues are his chief concern behind his attempts to criminalize the involuntary implantation of microchips. He said he also shares concern that the devices could someday be used, you ready for this, as the mark of the beast. Described in the book of Revelation. Now why he said, he said, I don't, I don't understand the Bible, I don't understand his prophecy stuff, but there's something in the Bible about this. But another Democrat, Robert Brink, began mocking him, making fun of him, saying, the voters are not concerned with such foolishness. Pennsylvania, there's a lawmaker, and this is on the article, seeking to outlaw identification implants on humans, making it illegal to implant any identification device on or under a person's skin that would contain and transmit personal information. Now, while this is good, you've got to understand most of the politicians are not against this. They know, listen to me, can I show Vice President Biden, does he know something about it? Vice President Biden, before he was Vice President, when he was a Senator of Delaware, questioned Chief Justice Roberts about if he would rule against a mandatory implantable microchip to track American citizens, to track American citizens, warning he would have to address the issue if he became a Supreme Court judge. Now you listen to me. The politicians up there, he said he didn't, he didn't know he would have to wait till the time came. The politicians up there know about this chip and people like Reed and Pelosi don't have, know, they, they know about as much about Bible prophecy as Bin Laden does the Holy Ghost. Sorry for the uh, little uh, comparison there, but that's about the truth. In fact, Homeland Security put out a bulletin right after the president was elected that said that anybody that believes in abortion, that believes you should store food, believes that you, could, you should have gold, and believes in Bible prophecy could become a domestic terrorist. They also put our military men coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan as possible domestic terrorists. Are y'all listening to this? Now I've heard guys talk about that one day we'd get to that point. Honey, we're not one day and now, we're at that point. And if they pass it, and I believe they're going to, I believe whatever they got to do, they're twisting arms, they're bribing people, they're promising people money, they're promising them committee positions, and there's people, let me tell you something, we got people in Washington that would kill their mama and sell their soul to the devil to have power and authority over people because it's a demon. 
It's a spirit that wants control. There's a Jezebel spirit in the land. Come on. Now, I'm going to publicly say this. In Canada, a group of Pentecostals were told they had to put the chip in. And one thing about a liberal government like that, that they, they do honor freedom of people. And when the Pentecostals sued the employee, they said, you can't put this chip in, and they gave them a card. They didn't give it. They had to pay for a card with a gold chip on the back. And now they access everything about the card just like you with a chip. But everybody else in the fact is, by the way, two and a half million people already have this chip, guys. It's all over, it's all over Mexico. The Mexican government, I have just read, is getting ready to in, make sure every Mexican in Mexico gets this chip implanted. This is a universal thing. This isn't just a local thing. They've already come up with an invisible tattoo now that can track you that they're going to have on folks within about eight years. Now, you listening? Come on. What? Oh, boy. Why did, why did Obama let the unions off of this health care thing? Why? Well, first of all, he's from Chicago, the headquarters of the union. Look, I preach in Chicago, honey. Chicago, Illinois, and I preach there... One pastor that has a 5,000-member church said everybody in my county, the mayor and all 23, 24 councilmen and his leaders just got arrested for bribes. The whole thing got arrested. You understand what I'm saying? That's where the mafia is and was and still hangs out. Everything in Washington is being done like mob rule. Come on. Come on. on the Mississippi River, there's a young Christian boy that worked on a barge, and they went to him and said, you're going to have to have this chip and plant Homeland Security. He says, you got to have it. He said, I'm not going to do it. They said, you're fired. He said, you fire me over that and I'll take you to court. And so they gave him, he cost him $800 to get a card that does the same thing the chip does. But people are taking this chip, not thinking anything about it. Now you listen to what I'm about to tell you, and I may have to eat my words one day. But you are not going to put a chip in this boy's right hand or forehead. It's not going to happen. You cut my head off first. I'll, 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 I'll gag in my own blood before I let you stick a chip in my hand or my forehead, tracking everywhere I'm going with medical information. Now, you want to you give me a medical card? That's fine. I'll take a card. I got a card now. I got a driver's license. I got to give me a card with something on the back of it. I'll take that. But it is against my religious belief. Oh, hold on here. Let me talk to you. Let's go back to the union. Why did he exempt them to 2017? Because 2017, 2018 is when it's going to be absolutely mandatory for everybody to have this mark in their head or forehead, this, this chip. So they're going to exempt them till the time comes. You know when they pass the health care thing, there's four years of collecting money where there's nothing going on. You do know that, don't you? I wonder why they're doing that. Because they got a $12 trillion debt they can't pay back. So get the money in now and, you know, they're borrowing from Social Security. I mean, Pennsylvania right now, up there in Parkersburg, West Virginia, there's IOUs in a vault where the government's barred Social Security money because it was the one thing making money was Social Security. And now the Social Security's out of the money, and they're trying to get an IOU paid back and can't get the IOU paid back. Come on, we're in a mess, somebody. So what I'm saying to you is the reason they're shoving this through is because, and th listen, this is too close to the beast system. I'm not saying it is, but I'm telling you, if they put that in there, why can't they put a scanner in there and scan other information later, not just your medical information? And we got so many... Oh, help me now. Let me tell you what I think is happening. Now, I may be, this is my own little theory. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope I'm off in the head. But I have a feeling that the only people who would resist that thing are people who believe in the Bible, who are older people, who are raised in church and know it. So what do you have to do? You ready for what I'm about to tell you? What do you do? You've got to kill off the old people. Kill them off in the next six to seven years, and you'll have a younger generation that loves technology. They'll think it's the greatest thing in the world, and they'll put that thing in their head and in their forehead because you won't have the old Christian people around. But I'm going to tell you, don't know how long I'm going to be around, but I'm going to keep preaching it as long as I'm around. My yashitore mahatangas. Come on, we've got enough ignorance in this nation. That's why we're in the mess, because ain't nobody paying attention to anything. You see that hand? That hand don't belong to Washington, D.C. That hand belongs to the Lord God who created it. You see that head, that mind, that brain don't belong to brainwash Washington, D.C. That mind belongs to God, to the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, help me preach somebody. Woo. Hey, 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 let me ask you. Is this making sense to anybody? 